Hey, welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. This is Joe Van Cleave. Today, I'm going to give an overview of the Webster XL747. This is a brother-made Japanese machine. Stay tuned. As you may know, I really like ultra-portable typewriters. The more portable, the better. And for me, it's all about being able to take the typewriters in various places, being able to take them out of the house or at least to different rooms of the house, out to my backyard, my shed, go out to coffee shops or wherever. To me, the writing experience is more than just being cooped up in the office looking at the same four walls. Um, it's about the experience of taking the machine with me. So I really like portable typewriters. Um, to many people, the epitome of the portable typewriter is going to be the Olivetti Letter of 22. As far as ultra portables or portables go, it is considered one of the best machines ever made. Now, I've owned three Olivetti Letter of 22s, and I've got to say that I don't own any right now, and there's a reason for that. For me, uh, they're a little bit too finicky a little bit uh, too mushy of a feel. They always have mechanical issues, especially with the escapements, and they're hard to service, the escapements, because the escapement mechanism is, mechanism is buried deep inside the, me the mechanism. So about a little over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I came across, in a thrift store here in my local town, this blue typewriter that had a brand name. I didn't know what it was. It was a Webster XL747 and it appeared to be in really good shape and I liked the color and I liked uh, the, some of the features and I picked it up and I've come to really like it as a portable typewriter. Let's take a look at it. Well this is the case to the Webster XL747. Um, it has a really good carrying handle, a strap that goes all the way from one side to the other. It's a soft case, uh, and it has, of course, a zipper, and of course, like most all zippers, it's going to have a little fabric lining to the zipper. But unlike all the Olivetti's I ever owned, this case actually has a good zipper. So there's something about um, the Olivetti Letter of 22's that, uh, as any typewriter aficionado probably knows by now there the zipper is always rotted out the fabric along the zipper but uh, this one is in good shape and that what that means to me is that it's a practical typewriter that I can take with me without having to find an alter alternative kind of carrying case. Yeah, this is a used machine, obviously. You can see the little nicks and scratches and stains. Uh, it's probably seen a lot of years of use, but uh, hey, let's open it up and take a look at it. Ta-da! Well, isn't she a beauty? I think it's a she. I haven't quite decided. Anyways, beautiful little portable typewriter. And the great thing will start out about it, obviously the color scheme, right? This robin's egg blue, the white keys, the red tab and repeat spacer keys. Um, and it's all metal. Unlike some of the other uh, Japanese portables, uh, like the Silver Seiko Royal Mercuries that I have, the, the ribbon cover is metal, not plastic. So it has a really nice, smooth, rounded, shiny metal appearance to it, which I really like. Now there's a couple uh, minor condition issues or um, visual issues. Number one is a good thing. There's this Parents Magazine sticker that a lot of these typewriters had back in the 70s. Okay, it's still on there. That's cool. That's a good thing. Bad thing, there's someone's social security number engraved in the space bar and that's kind of normal for back in that era when people in the United States were kind of informed to believe that their social security number was an identification number they could use to protect their valuables. Anyways, besides that, the condition of the machine is really spectacularly beautiful and there's only a few tiny little nicks in it like there's a tiny little chip in the paint right there where you, where you might expect next to the uh, carriage return lever uh, there's maybe a tiny little chip a mark right here uh, next to the, the carriage uh, release lever but uh, other than that it's a beautiful machine and let's go around on the back side first of all let's see that is made by brother in Japan so the Webster XL 747s are a brother-made machine. Let's look at the features. Well, we'll start at the back of the machine. First of all, the uh, carriage return lever pushes down into a detent position for storage, and so 
you simply pull it up like that into the uh, usable position. The length of the carriage return lever, I would say, is about the same as a letter of 22. It sticks up a little bit higher of an angle. It's certainly a lot better than a Hermes rocket, which has that tiny little angle, 90 degree angle type carriage return lever. This one is quite useful. Not nearly as long as a Smith Corona, of course, but it's a lot smaller machine, too. On the back of the machine, there is a push button release right here for the paper support. And that locks back into place. You have your typical push and slide um, margin settings, left and right margin setting. So there's a red line, a little red mark on the white plastic key that actually indicates the uh, margin position for you. On the right side here is the, the carriage release lever, and if you pull it to the side, there is a lever right here. This is the uh, storage position, the, the so-called locking position for the carriage, and you push it down to release the carriage, and now the carriage has full range of motion between the margin stops. To store the typewriter, you want to pull this up, and then when you pull the carriage back, um, it actually it's it's actually locking the carriage using the escapement itself um, and all it's doing is keeping the carriage from going any further to the right so in that sense it's not a real safe way to protect your escapement mechanism from damage due to sudden hard blows while it's in the lock position because again the escapement is what is locking it and it is you can see by releasing the escapement with the carriage release lever it releases the the carriage but anyway so you push that down to release it now one of the things I noticed it has a soft case the typewriter comes in a soft case but it has these two slots in the back and I'm not really sure why they're there and it almost looks like that there could have been some kind of an alternative case like a hard case maybe that these two slots lock into to secure the typewriter for storage I'm not really sure and that's just strictly a guess on my part but I do notice those slots there they're kind of interesting here you can see the little bell right here and I noticed on my particular machine the bell is more of a clanky sound and it's probably because the arm and the mechanism needs to be adjusted it doesn't really chime as brightly as some of the other end of carriage bells but I would say that's probably just because of the condition of my machine this particular one needs to be adjusted okay so there is a uh, on the paper table back here there is a scale and also your paper bale also has an equivalent scale up here. The paper bale is a sort of a triangular shaped uh, metal rod and it has two little levers, two little protrusions, on, one on either side for you to uh, grab it with your finger. There are no rollers on it, but it looks like the a bale sits pretty close to the platen. On the left side now of the carriage, you're going to have your line spacing settings and it has one, one and a half, and two, plus up on top in the back there's an R setting that releases the ratcheting for adjusting the spacing for, for instance, typing in pre-printed form. So I usually type in the single line spacing, but it is nice to have the one and a half as well. And of course the carriage uh, platen knobs, if you will, carriage knobs, right, right there. And on the right side, you're going to have your carriage uh, platen tension release lever. You push it to the back to release tension on the platen roller. You pull it forward to re-engage the tension between the platen and the pressure rollers. You can see one of the pressure rollers right here. There's one on each side. If you release that lever, you can see how it releases the tension on the paper. And I should add, there is only a carriage release lever on the right side. So in that regards, it's very similar to the Hermes rocket. The left side does not have a carriage release lever. So you're going to have to be using your right hand for that. Okay, so let's go to the ribbon cover and the center part of the typewriter. Uh, so the ribbon cover pulls off like that. And it uses two rubber grommets, which the original grommets are still in good shape. And they... There's little posts here on either side that engage in those grommets, so that is how that comes off. And it is an all-metal uh, cover, 
It's nice and uh, solid. And um, so you have your typical settings uh, here in the middle. There are locking uh, little brake levers, if you want to call it that, on the ribbon spools that are kind of reminiscent of the Olympia or Hermes typewriters that keeps the this, the ribbon from unwinding, spooling out unnecessarily loose into the machine. Um, this machine is a carriage shift machine, not a uh, basket or segment shift like on the letter of 22s that I was comparing it to earlier. Um, and of course you have your ribbon vibrator. So the force on this typewriter, the force required to type is obviously heavier than some of the uh, nicer typewriters that I've covered in the past. Up front here, behind the ribbon, is a little indicator line that has your typing line in and it has a little scale for, of letters. And then there is a little holder here for uh, business cards, for typing on small cards. I like the design of the uh, type bars on this machine. They're nice and wide. Um, they're quite wide in this direction, uh, so they look pretty well made. Well, let's thread up a piece of paper into this machine and try it out, shall we? And of course, like I usually do with these reviews, I'm going to be doing backwards typing. I haven't quite figured out how to get my camera set up to where I can do forwards typing, but uh, Anyways, so this is threading the paper in backwards. So, here we go. I'm really slow <laughs> typing backwards. I can't read the keyboard. Um, so the General impressions of the quality of typing and the experience of typing on this machine is that, um, first of all, it makes a pretty decent imprint, and the font is, uh, the type slugs are very well aligned. Um, I haven't used this machine in a long time, and just out of the box, out of the storage, uh, not even with a fresh section of ribbon. It types quite nice. It has a 12 character per inch, the so-called elite size font. Um, my impressions of it compared to some of the other machines in my collection, some of the other portables, is that um, it takes a little bit more force uh, to operate this typewriter than some of the others. There's, there's a little bit more force required. Uh, it's not quite as soft and mushy feeling as, for instance, the Olivetti Letter 22s, but for my particular uh, aesthetic taste, that's actually a good thing. I really like um, the way you do have to hit these keys a little bit more firmly, but it responds accordingly and gives you a really nice uh, dark imprint. And the thing about this machine is it's been very, very reliable as far as no mechanical issues whatsoever. Let's cover the features of the keyboard. Well, first of all, on the left side, there is a touch selector, low to high. High is on top, low is on the bottom. There is some feel, some difference in feel between moving this lever. Now, some of the typewriters you'll find the condition of them is old and there's not much of a difference in the way it feels, but this one does feel a little bit easier down at the low setting, and that's where I keep it at. If you do the high setting, it's definitely harder and you can tell the difference, but I like it about at the low setting there. This is a more modern keyboard, so it has the number one with the exclamation mark above it. It's a U.S. styled keyboard, so you have your dollar sign above the four, the shifted four. Again, you have the cent and the uh, at sign over here, the, the fractions one quarter and one half over here. This machine has uh, preset tabs. They're every ten spaces, and you can't really change them. Um, there are preset tab slugs in the back there, uh, but uh, so it's a preset tab machine, which is kind of a nice compromise in a sense of it doesn't have the full featured tab like a letter of 22 might have, but it makes the, the mechanism a little simpler inside and it makes it easier to service, easier to get to the parts, but it also gives you a tab 
capability at least, which is one a good thing. Here is the this uh, right hand arrow is your backspace key. The double arrow, of course, is your margin release key, so you can go beyond either the left or the right margins with it. Shift and shift lock, of course, and. Uh, here over here on the right side is your ribbon color selector. So this is a feature that the Hermes rockets don't have, right? The ability to type on either the top or bottom of the ribbon. And so I uh, have a blue, a, a black red, I should say, a black red two color ribbon in here because it does have a ribbon color selector. So the one feature of this typewriter that I think is the most uh, enjoyable for me because it's kind of a novelty not all of my typewriters have this cap this feature. I think the only other one that does is the Smith Corona Galaxy 12. And that is this red key right here. That is the repeat spacer. Now, some people might think, and I've read comments on, on the internet, on typewriter blogs and websites, some people think that that is kind of a gimmick type of a feature. And perhaps at the time it came out, it, maybe it was marketed as such as a gimmick, but I found the repeat spacer to actually be quite useful. And I tell you what it's useful for, for me, is I'm typing along and I make a mistake and I only catch the mistake maybe one or two words later. Well, what I can do is I can back up, I can use my correction tape and correct the mistake and retype the, the letter correctly. Now I want to get back to where I was uh, typing before and instead of having to reach up to with my right hand to the carriage release lever and try to move the carriage manually and move it back to where I was, I can simply re repeat space rapidly back to where I continue where I left off and I can continue then typing. This is really good for when you're in the middle of writing really extensive writing. You have a lot of ideas in your head, and but you want to correct your mistakes as you go, and you don't want to be bothered with having to take your hands off the keyboard too much to move the carriage manually. This is a really good feature, and I really enjoy it. What I really think is cool about the feature is, well, as you know, probably, that the way the carriage moves is because when you do a carriage return, you're winding up a spring motor. And in this machine, the spring motor is this cylinder back here uh, on the left side of the machine. But that spring motor powers the movement of the carriage as you type a letter. And the escapement mechanism releases the carriage one space at a time as you type a letter or do the space bar. What the repeat spacer key does is it has, in the escapement mechanism, there is a kind of a flexible metal arm with a counterweight. And it kind of makes it vibrate back and forth. And it re repeatedly operates the uh, escapement mechanism and the power of the spring motor pushing against the escapement cog kicks that flexible metal arm and it keeps it vibrating, keeps it moving. So it's kind of like the way the pendulum on a grandfather clock keeps moving by the power of the weights pulling down on it. That's kind of what's happening here, except it's powered by the spring motor instead of weights. But I really find this to be a great feature uh, of this typewriter, and it makes it really, really useful. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that along with the typewriter in the case was a couple items of ephemera that I'll mention and show you because I know ephemera is kind of interesting to a lot of us typewriter collectors. The first thing I'll bring to your attention is this little plastic sleeve, a vinyl uh, plastic sleeve, and it actually slips over the carriage return lever and kind of protects it from rubbing up against the body of the typewriter when it's being shipped. So this is actually, the fact that it was still with it is pretty remarkable. Uh, the next thing was this kind of warranty registration card, and I believe BIC is Brother International. I think that's the uh, parent company of the Brother typewriter, or at least the U.S. distributor, North American distributor. But there is a little warranty registration card um, that came with the typewriter, which is pretty cool. I kind of like their logo, and it has the five-year guarantee. Very cool. And then um, is this user's manual the care and maintenance of your portable typewriter. And I kind of like this classic mid-20th mid century art. And on the back side is a little touch typing guide. And it says down in there, printed in Japan, and the style of font 
on this booklet is very much classic mid 20th century Japanese uh, printing. Uh, I've seen it in other kinds of documents as well. But this is a fold out document that describes all the features of the typewriter. One of the features that I was remiss in not mentioning earlier was the half spacing mechanism. So this is a half space typewriter. One when you press down the space bar, the carriage moves a half space. When you release it, it moves a ha another half space. So this enables you to do corrections uh, when, you're, when you miss and you don't type a letter. When you forget to type a letter in a word and you've already typed beyond that word, you can erase the word and then you can go in there and you can fit the extra letter in there by taking up a half space from the, from the, the space between before and after the word that you're correcting. So it's the half space feature this typewriter has. That's pretty cool. And um, there is a section here on cleaning and oiling. And they do recommend um, oil must never, must never be used on dusty parts, but only after thoroughly cleaning your machine. Keep oil away from rubber parts. Only the moving and sliding parts need oiling with frequency of oiling depending on the frequency of use. Do not oil the segment and line space ratchet wheel, which I think they're talking about being the uh, Segment ratcheting would be the, the escapement and the line space ratcheting is over here on the left side of the carriage where the carriage return lever is. Too much oil does not give best results, so wipe off all residue carefully with soft cloth. But I think it's real interesting the, they mention to don't oil dusty parts because the oil is going to move, is going to take that dust, those grits, fine pieces of grit particles, and it'll draw them into the fine uh, crevices and surfaces of the machine. So again, this machine I think is have quite tight tolerances, doesn't tolerate uh, having the oil and the dust combined. So keep it clean, keep it lubricated, use the lubrication sparingly. So when I was thinking about this brother typewriter uh, before uh, the production started, uh, I really started thinking of it as a comparison between this and the Olivetti Letter of 22s for several reasons. First of all, for the size of the typewriter and the weight of it, they're very similar for the fact that they have a soft carry case with a zipper uh, fitting. Um, the fact that a lot of the Letter of 22s are kind of colorful, bluish, turquoiseish, greenish colors. The fact that the Letter of 22s have one reddish button, the tab button. Um, so a number of reasons why there would be a comparison. Now, on paper, in theory, you would think the Letter of 22s are a better machine. And I've owned three of them, so I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Um, in ideal circumstances, they are a better machine. They do have a more subtle, softer touch to the keys. They do have a full-featured tab system where you can set and clear tabs at every one of the typing uh, positions on the, on the carriage. Um, so in that regards, they are a little bit more full-featured. They also have that Olivetti feature of if you press the, the margin release lever when you're doing a... Uh, carriage return, it'll stop indented five characters before the start of the line, which is a nice feature. But my experience has been with three different machines, all of them made in uh, Invria, Italy. One of the two of them were US style keyboards. One was a British style keyboard. One was squarish keys. The other two, one was round keys and one was uh, the tombstone shaped keys. Anyways, so I've had three different letter of 22s. Yeah, ideally it's a better machine, but my experience has been at least compared those three with this one here. This uh, brother, yeah, it has a little bit heavier of a touch, but it also takes the, the abuse and the hard hitting a lot better. I, I think the, the, the quality of steel, the quality of the metal in this typewriter is a little bit higher grade. It's just, it takes it. Um, you have to use a little bit more finger force, but it's not a mushy feel. It's more of a snappy feel. Um, and of course, the repeat spacer I really like. I think that's great. I've had less, much less mechanical issues with this typewriter. When I, I, I bought it in a thrift store, it, it was, hasn't, hasn't been serviced in, I'm sure, maybe never. Maybe it was never serviced. 
Um, it took a little bit more degreasing and cleaning than normal. Not that it looked dirty, but I think the it kind of reminds me of military weapons, uh, like comparing the American-made M16 rifle with a Kalashnikov. Uh, this is the M M16. This has tighter tolerances, and I noticed that grit and stuff gets in those fine surfaces and crevices more, and you take you take more time. It takes more time to clean it out, but once you do clean it out, it is a better working machine. Whereas the Kalashnikov is a little bit more loose, has more, is built for more dirtier, rougher field conditions. Doesn't have as big of an issue with that. Uh, so this is a little has a little bit more precision to the way it's built. I think on the inside, you do have to keep it clean. One of the things I noticed was, for instance, with the touch selector right here. Um, what that's doing is it's, it's altering the spring tension on a universal bar that all the key linkages press. And if the linkages already are uh, hardened up due to grease and debris, it's going to feel heavy on the touch regardless of what this spring setting is set to. So you have to clean all those linkage and pivot points and get all the de de debris and crud out of there. Um, and the other thing was when I first got it, the repeat spacer would stop. It, it never had a problem with manual spacing. It never had a problem with skipping or overtyping in terms of the escapement itself, but the repeat spacer would stop. And that was just the little sliding pieces in the escapement mechanism had uh, the tolerances are so tight on those parts that it you have to make sure you degrease it really well. The other thing is the quality of the, of the metal parts inside the machine. There's a lot more stainless steel in this mechanism than I expected. Uh, I think the quality of the parts is, is pretty good. So the machine is all metal on the case. It has a solid feel. It has that shiny paint job that kind of reminds you of a car finish and I have waxed it up with car polish so it's beautiful color. Uh, it takes a little bit more abuse I think than some other typewriters. It has less mechanical problems once you've serviced them. Um, I really think for me this is a really good what I call a beater typewriter and I discovered it with this machine last summer sitting out in the backyard in my man cave shed I was sitting in a nice comfortable chair inside my shed and instead of having a tray table in front of me, I had this typewriter sitting on my lap and it just happened to be that the reclining position that I was in, the position of my arms and my, the typewriter down a little bit lower, my thighs of my legs were slightly uh, uh, down toward the knees. So the typewriter was in kind of this low, slow, low slung kind of a position, but it was really ergonomically comfortable for me. And I just enjoyed typing with this. Um, it's small enough that you can carry this typewriter just about anywhere. And because the case and the handle is in good shape, you don't have to worry about having to take a larger shoulder bag and stuffing in a shoulder bag like I would have with my Letter of 22 or with my Hermes Rocket. I can carry it in the, its own case, and which makes it nice and small and portable. So I really like uh, this brother-made typewriter. I've seen a couple other brothers at thrift stores. In fact, I almost bought one last week. It wasn't a Webster. It was some other brand uh, name, uh, branded name that I had never heard of. And it was in a lot worse condition than this, but it still worked good. So I thought, wow. Uh, so this is my first experience with Brother manual typewriters, and I'm pretty impressed. Not quite as smooth of a touch experience, but I think more reliable. So that's my review of the Webster XL747 made by Brother. It's a great typewriter, great portable, ultra portable typewriter. Well, until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day. One last bit of advice from the manual is very much down at the bottom. It says, do not let errors discourage you. Strive as you practice to, le to lessen the errors. The real question is, are you improving day by day? Practice makes perfect. Isn't that cool? A little bit of practical advice on practicing to be a good typist.